5.2 goes over your rules for your powers. We're going to start with raising a power to a power. So when there's an exponent raised to a power, we are going to multiply those two powers together. So if we look at example 1 for a, we have 2 cubed raised to the fifth power. Because that 3 is being raised to the fifth power, we are just going to keep the 2, take the 3, multiply it by the 5, and that gives us 2 to the power of 15. In this case, with this power of 15, it is so large that we are just going to leave this as 2 to the 15th power instead of actually multiplying it out 2 times itself 15 times. For example, b, we have x squared to the power of negative 6. The x squared is going to be raised to that power of negative 6 by multiplying that negative 6 and that 2 together. So this is going to give us x to the power of 2 times the negative 6. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, so that's x to the positive, I'm sorry, x to the power of negative 12. We do have to turn that negative 12 into a positive 12, so we're going to just take the reciprocal of that x and bring that x to the 12th to the bottom of our fraction. So it's going to be 1 over x to the 12th power. For example, c, we have 3 times y to the negative third raised to the negative second power times y to the negative fifth power. So we're first going to simplify this y to the negative third raised to the negative second power. So we're going to be doing 3 times y to the negative third times the negative second times y to the negative fifth. The negative 3 times the negative 2 gives us a positive 6. So that's 3 times y to the sixth power times y to the negative fifth power. We can multiply these straight across. And remember, when we're multiplying two terms like that y to that sixth power and y to the negative fifth power, you have the same bases and you're multiplying, so you're going to be adding those exponents. So this 3 is going to stay. The y to the sixth adds with the negative 5. This is going to leave us with 3y because 6 plus negative 5 is the same thing as 6 minus 5, which just gives us 1, so it's gonna, that's what's giving us that 3y. With example D, we have x squared raised to the negative first power all over x to the negative third power raised to the third power. So again, I have a power raised to a power, so I'm going to be multiplying those powers. On the top, we're going to do x to the second power times the negative first. On the bottom, we're going to do x to the negative third times the positive 3. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so that's going to give us x to the negative second power. The negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, so that's x to the negative ninth power. In order to turn these exponents to be positive, we are going to switch where they are. So that negative 2 is going to become a positive 2 if we pull that x squared to the bottom. And that negative 9 is going to turn into a positive 9 if we bring that x to the ninth power to the top. So this is going to give us x to the ninth power over x squared. Remember, when you are dividing powers and your bases are the same, you can subtract those powers. So you're going to keep that x and subtract 9 minus 2. 9 minus 2 gives us 7, so our final answer here is x to the 7th power. Alright, so when we look at example 2, we're looking at these a little bit differently. So with some of these, we're going to have a parentheses around a term and that entire set of parentheses is being raised to a power. Sometimes that power is only on a specific term, which means that that specific term is what's being raised to that power, not what's it, whatever's in front of it. If we look at example A, we have negative 3x all raised to the fourth power. So you have to look at each of these parts within the parentheses separately because everything in there is raised to the fourth power. So it's not just the negative 3 or the x, it's all of it. It's the negative, the 3, and the x that are all raised to that fourth power. So if you want to, I like to rewrite these to where I have a negative 1 times 3 times x put them in brackets, and that's what all is being raised to the fourth power. So this negative 1 is being raised to the fourth power. 
this 3 is being raised to the 4th power, and this x is being raised to the 4th power. If we have that negative 1 to the 4th power, it's just going to give us a positive 1. 3 to the 4th power is like saying 3 times 3 times 3 times not 3, which is the same thing as 9 times 9. That's 81. And that x to the 4th power is just x to the 4th. So now if we multiply all of these, 1 times 81 is 81. 81 times x to the 4th power gives us 81x to the 4th power. So again, whenever we have a parentheses around term or terms, that power on the outside of the parentheses is sort of being distributed to each part inside the parentheses. For example, b, we have negative 2x squared all raised to the third power. So once again, that negative 2x squared is inside those parentheses. So we're going to separate this to where we have a negative 1 times a 2 times the x squared, put them in brackets, and that is what's being raised to the third power. So that's negative 1 to the third power, 2 to the third power, and x squared to the third power. The negative 1 to the third power, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 gives us negative 1. 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 x squared raised to the third power. Remember that we have a power raised to a power, so we're going to multiply those powers. That's going to give us x to the sixth power. That negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, so we're just doing negative 8 times x to the sixth power, which gives us a final answer of negative 8x to the sixth power. For example, c we have 3x to the negative second power, y cubed, all raised to the negative second power. So again, I'm going to separate this. I'm going to have a 3. I have an x to the negative second. And I have a y cubed, all within those parentheses. So each of these terms is being raised to the negative second power. So I'm going to have 3 to the negative second, x to the negative second, raised to the negative second and y cubed raised to the negative second power. That 3 to the negative second power, I want that 3 or that power to be positive. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of this. It's going to be 1 over 3 squared. That x to the negative second times to the, or sorry, raised to the negative second power, we're going to do x to the negative second times the negative second. And y cubed raised to the negative second, we're going to do y cubed times negative second. So that 1 over 3 squared is 1 over 9. x to the negative second times the negative second gives us x to the fourth power. And y to the third raised the, or sorry, y to the third times the negative second is y to the negative sixth power. We want that negative 6 to be a positive 6, so we're going to bring it into the denominator of a fraction. So we're going to have 1 over 9 times x over x to the fourth power. We can put that over 1 times 1 over y to the 6th power. If we multiply all of this straight across, we're just going to have x to the 4th power over 9y to the 6th power. With our next part, we're dealing with fractions being raised to powers. So if we look at example 3, we're just simplifying these and making sure we have positive exponents in our answers. For A, we have x over 2 all raised to the third power. When we have a fraction raised to a power, that power applies to both the numerator and the denominator and any terms inside the numerator or any terms out in the inside of the denominator. So we can rewrite this as x to the third power over 2 to the third power. So again, that, that power goes to both the numerator and the denominator here. So that x to the third power is just x cubed. That 2 to the third power is 2 times itself 3 times, which is 8. So that gives us a final fraction there of x cubed over 8. For example b, we have negative 2x cubed over 3y squared, all raised to the third power. So when we have a negative with a fraction, we either see that negative out front of that fraction like we do here, 
or with our, num our numerator. So you can take this fraction and either say that it's the opposite of this 2x cubed over 3y squared or that it's a negative 2x cubed over 3y squared. So either way, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to keep it as the opposite of, so I'm going to keep the negative 1 in front. So I just have a negative 1 times 2x cubed over 3y squared that's being raised to that third power. So that negative 1 gets raised to the third power as well as the 2x cubed gets raised to the third power as well as the 3y squared gets raised to the third power. So we know that negative 1 cubed is just negative 1. The 2x cubed to the third power is going to be 2 to the third power as well as x cubed to the third power. And then the bottom, that 3y squared to the third power, that 3 gets raised to the third power as well as that y squared gets raised to the third power. So that 2 cubed is 8, so we're going to keep that negative 1 out front. And we're going to multiply it by that 8 times x cubed raised to the third power. So we're going to multiply these two. So that's going to be x to the ninth power. And then we also, on the bottom of that fraction, we have 3 cubed, which is 27, times y to the second raised to the third power. So we multiply those. That's y to the sixth power. The 8 and the 27 do not simplify at all, so we can just multiply this 8x to the 9th power over 27y to the 6th power by negative 1, and this is going to leave us with negative 8x to the 9th power over 27y to the 6th power. And again, you can leave this negative either in front of the fraction or with the numerator. It won't go in the denominator at all. If we look at example C, we have x to the negative second over 2 cubed, all raised to the negative first power. So what we can do with this is we can apply this negative 1 to both the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to have x to the negative second raised to the negative first, as well as 2 cubed raised to the negative first. Now with that numerator, that x to the negative second, to the negative first, we're going to multiply that negative 2 times the negative 1. On the bottom, we have 2 to the third power times the negative first power. So with this, that negative 2 times negative 1 gives us a positive 2, so that's x squared. That 2 to the third power to the negative 1 is going to be 2 to the negative third. We have to turn that negative 3 into a positive 3, so we're going to bring that up. So this is going to be 2 to the third power times x squared. That 2 to the third power is 8, so that, it, that gives us 8x squared. For example D, we have a negative 3 over 4x cubed, all raised to the negative second power. So again, with this one, I'm going to take that negative and just apply it to the 3. So that way I have a negative 3 raised to the negative second power, as well as a 4x cubed raised to the negative second power. Now, I could turn these negative 2s as those powers into positive 2s by taking the reciprocal of these, or I could just apply that negative 2 as the power to the terms in the numerator and the terms in the denominator. It's totally up to you. I'm going to turn them into positives first, so I'm going to have 4x cubed raised to the second power as well as negative 3 raised to the second power. So that 4x cubed raised to the second power, the 4 gets the 2 as the power, as well as the x cubed gets that 2 as the power. On the bottom, that negative 3 squared, that negative 1 gets the power, as well as the 3 gets the power. So 4 squared gives us 16, x to the third power raised to the second power, we multiply, gives us x to the sixth power, and negative 1 squared is positive 1, times 3 squared, which is 9, just gives us a positive 9. So that gives us a final solution here of 16x to the sixth power over 9. So if we look at example 4, we're just told to simplify 
to assume all variables are non-zero numbers and write all answers using positive exponents. For example, A, we have 3 fourths raised to the negative third power. I want to turn this negative 3 as that power to be a positive 3 first. And by doing that, I'm going to just take the reciprocal of that 3 fourths. So I'm going to turn that into a positive 3 and flip that fraction. So now it's raised to a positive third power. Remember that power goes to both the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to be 4 cubed over 3 cubed. That 4 cubed, we're doing 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. That 3 cubed, we're doing 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So that just gives us that 64 over 27. For example, B, we have x squared over 5's rate. 5 raised to the negative second power. So again, I want to turn that negative 2 into a positive 2 by taking the reciprocal of that fraction. So it's just going to be 5 over x squared. Now it's raised to a positive second power. That power of 2 goes to both the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to be 5 squared over x squared raised to the second power. Remember, when we have a power raised to a power, we multiply those powers. So that 5 squared is just 25. That x squared raised to the second power, we multiply the 2 times 2, which gives us x to the fourth power. So it's just 25 over x to the fourth power. For example, C, we have negative 2y cubed over 3 raised to the negative second power. So again, I want to turn that negative 2 as that power into a positive 2 first. So I am just going to take the reciprocal of this, keep the negative out front. So I'm going to have negative 3 over 2y cubed all raised to the second power. So now I'm just going to distribute that 2 to each part of that fraction. That negative that's out in front also gets raised to the second power. So we have a negative 1 to the second power times 3 to the second power over 2y cubed to the second power. That negative 1 squared is just 1, so we can cancel that out and just work with that fraction now. So that 3 squared gives us 9. On the bottom of that fraction, that 2y cubed raised to the second power, that 2 gets the power of 2, as well as that y cubed gets the power of 2. So this 9 stays. That 2 squared is 4 y cubed raised to the second power, we multiply those powers, it's going to be y to the sixth power. We cannot simplify from here, so it's just that 9 over 4y to the sixth power. If we look at our next set of examples, we're just simplifying and assuming all variables represent integers. So for example a, we are given 3 to the power of 4y times 3 to the power of 5y. So for this one, we want to remember, if we're multiplying two bases that are the same, we can keep the base and add the powers. So we're just going to keep that 3 and add the 4y plus 5y. 4 plus 5 gives us 9. We keep the y, so that's 3 to the power of 9y. And we just leave it like that. For example, b, we have two, or sorry, 5 to the power of 2x raised to the power of 3x. So again, we have a power raised to a power. So we're going to keep that base of 5 and multiply those powers. The 2x times 3x gives us 6x squared. So that's 5 to the power of 6x squared. For your last example, C, we have 2 to the power of n over 3 to the power of m, all raised to the power of 5n. So this 5n for that power is going to go to both the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to give us 2 to the power of n raised to the power of 5n over 3 to the power of m raised to the power of 5n. From here, we're going to multiply those powers. Since we have a power raised to a power, this is going to give us 2 to the power of n times 5n 
is 5n squared over 3 to the power of m times 5n, which is going to get the 5mn. You cannot simplify this any further, so we just leave it. The 2 to the power of n squared, sorry, 2 to the power of 5n squared over 3 to the power of 5mn. So just a reiteration of your rules with your exponents. If you have a negative exponent, you need to make sure that you turn it into a positive by taking the reciprocal of that term. Um, if you have anything raised to the power of 0, it's automatically 1. If you are multiplying two bases that are the same that are raised to powers, you can keep the base and add those powers. If you're dividing two bases that are the same that are raised to powers, you can keep the base and subtract those powers. If you have something inside parentheses that is raised to a power and that whole side, the whole parentheses being raised to a power, that those two powers get multiplied by one another. If you have more than one term inside the parentheses, you need to make sure that you sort of say distribute that power to each of those terms inside the parentheses. And then when you have fractions inside parentheses that are raised to powers, those powers go to both the numerator and the denominator.